Onk Live Insights is a video editorial program produced by Onk Live. Blinitumab is a bispecific engaging antibody. What we're trying to do is bind both CD19 on the leukemic blasts and CD3 on the T cells. The consequence of binding CD3 is to activate the T cell and to do so in the context of, of the B cell. In so doing, the, the, the thought processes will both expand those T cells and potentially even generate uh, an, an antigen-based response against the leukemia. What do I mean by that? Although we're non-specifically engaging and activating T cells, there is the possibility that we may be activating T cells that would otherwise uh, have, have recognized antigen in the context of MHC. And because of other host immunosuppressive functions as the leukemia progresses, would otherwise have been inhibited, now has the chance to grow and translate into a memory T cell response. This is incredibly important as we start to think about the role of blinitumumab as more than just an induction agent, more than just an agent to drive CRs, but as a means of generating long-lived CRs. So I think about blinitumumab in this context more as it relates to a consolidation. How do I keep a patient in remission? And so strategically, we also know that blinitumumab may work less well in patients with high burden disease, but if we can get them to a low level disease, using the blinitumumab as a consolidation may give us the advantage of both efficacy and durability. And I think that's very, very important. Blinitumumab is a very active but also very potent drug. So patients are usually admitted the first up to the first nine days into the, in the hospital. It's an intravenous continuous infusion. It started at a low dose for the first several days, and then if it's well tolerated, the dose is increased. We give steroid pre-medications at the very first, um, prior to starting the infusion, and in every dose step inc increase, you need to redose the patient with steroids. I think it's also important to, to teach your medical team, your pharmacists, your infusion nurses, never to flush or push the line because the infusion rate is so low and so minimal that any flushing would deliver a tremendous amount of the antibody at one point. It has not happened or I have not had, heard about it, but I think it's important because it's a, it's a different concept and a different drug. We're learning how to use it. So you start slow. You observe, observe the patient for several days, for the first seven days in the hospital. You have a dose increase at day number eight. You observe the patient, and then usually on day nine, the patient goes home. It's important if transfusion or side effects or allergic reactions or reactions occur, you have to stop the um, infusion, wait for recovery of the side effects, would reduce the dose, slow, start over again at the low dose, and delay the increase for up to a week before you dose re-escalate the patient. And patients who have grade four side effects are usually, or most of the time, you know, usually great, patients with grade four side effects are discontinued permanently. I'd like to speak to the safety of blinitumumab in acute lymphoblastic leukemias. We now recognize that there are two primary toxicities we're gonna to see in this space. The first is cytokine release phenomena. Those are really going to come on within the first seven to ten days. Those are going to be accompanied typically by low blood pressure, uh, by fever, and uh, potentially uh, by, by end organ dysfunction, meaning renal failure and so on, if the hypotension gets severe. All that being said, we have found as we've uh, transitioned to uh, cytoreductive therapy or even dexamethasone-based therapy to reduce disease burden, prior to the blinitumumab. Dexamethasone therapy, uh, dexamethasone therapy uh, at the time of starting blinitumumab and at the time of dose escalation one week later, that we've been able to significantly reduce the onset of cytokine release phenomena. Of the dozen or so patients we've treated at Moffitt Cancer Center, I can tell you from experience now, the worst that we have seen has been fever. 
we've actually not had to send anyone to our ICU or, or adopt any more uh, intensive therapies. It may be possible that the neurologic side effects are also a sequela of this cytokine release phenomenon. We know that they tend to come on around the same time as the cytokine release syndrome. We know that uh, they also tend to respond to uh, therapies like dexamethasone. Again, so far in our hands, we have not seen that emerge. It's not to say that it is not a significant side effect and one that needs to be monitored for. But uh, so far, we've been fortunate in that regards with the use of dexamethasone, again, uh, to, to both uh, reduce disease burden prior to the blinitumumab and at the time of onset and the time of dose escalation, as, as uh, illustrated in the manuscript uh, published in, in uh, uh, Lancet Oncology. I want to speak specifically to its efficacy in the Philadelphia positive space because I think this is a very important observation that we didn't have prior to the ASH 2015 meeting. We now know that blenitumumab can be effective in this space with upwards of 40% showing responses to the blenitumumab agent. This is critically important for our patients who become tyrosine kinase inhibitor refractory and for the first time provides us with a, with a therapeutic alternative. It will be very interesting to see how other agents in this space, like onatuzumab, will ultimately uh, influence both the response rate and provide another means for, for uh, providing durable remissions for these patients. So it's very exciting from my perspective to see how inotuzumab will also influence uh, outcomes in the Philadelphia positive space. I want to transition from there to the Philadelphia negative space, where blenitumumab has already now published data showing a high level of efficacy and durability. The, uh, I think the problem that we're going to have with blenitumumab moving forward is understanding who is the best patient for this therapy. And how do we get them there? And by that, very specifically, I, I mean, when should we use this? Should we really try to use this agent in the context of a consolidation, as I mentioned, after chemotherapy to try and really whittle down the disease in the bone marrow? Should we begin thinking about blenitumab in the context of CAR T cell therapy? And what I mean specifically is for those patients who progress after CAR-T, can we use a bispecific engaging molecule to rescue that CAR-T vector and to allow for remissions to occur in that space? Can we use blenitumumab after inotuzumab? I mentioned that inotuzumab also has high efficacy rates, but again, can we use the blenitumab compound to drive the durability of that response over time? I think that there's a lot of very exciting things that are coming with this, this particular molecule. Information that's already been presented, both at uh, this ASH 2015 meeting as well as in publication. But I think the real future of Blinn is, is a very exciting one moving forward. We've treated a dozen patients with Blinn and Tumumab off study. So far, the safety, from a safety perspective, the, the biggest problem we've run into is not the cytokine release phenomena or even the neurologic sequela of that uh, uh, T cell expansion. It's actually been infection. We're treating patients who are heavily pretreated with multiple relapse disease. And while the blinitumumab is more selectively targeting those malignant B cells, we are going to see neutropenia develop. We are going to see infections develop in that space. And so for us, that has actually been the more challenging aspect uh, as it relates to this molecule. We will hospitalize all of our patients with blinitumumab and monitor them closely over the first 10 days. Now, we won't necessarily keep them in the hospital beyond 10 days if they're neutropenic. On the other hand, should they have a fever, should they have any other signs or symptoms of infection, most of those patients are remaining in the hospital until they recover their counts.